Hey guys, tonight I thought I'd go uh, for the new triple owner. I thought I would kind of give an overview of how the oil injection system is put together um, on the diff some of the different bikes. And um, I know when I first started doing this, I had questions. I would done rebuilt motors, but I they were all premix, so didn't have an oil injection system to worry about. So anyway, first part of the system is a tank. Okay, and there's four basic components to the tank. One is uh, a fill, okay, and we're, we're obviously dump the oil in. We have a sight glass so we can tell when we're running low, okay. This is the vent. Now this might be a little more important than you would think. And the reason being, it's like a vent on your, on your gas cap, okay. If this baby gets plugged up, we're going to have issues. We're going to start to run out of oil. We're going to, we're going to collapse the tank. We're going to, we're going to do something. So we need to make sure that this vent is is indeed open. Typically, it was a rubber hose that ran down through the um, center of the frame, like with the battery. Um, the fourth and most probably most critical part is right here, okay, the oil outlet. And the reason is this is my tank off my bike, and I replace it with a different one. But when I bought this, okay. See the screen in there? That was gone over with a, a, a film of coagulated oil or something. Um, you, you know, who knows why? Either the oil sat in there just way too long and it just coagulated, or maybe there was a synthetic, non-synthetic mix that didn't like its didn't like each other and coagulated. Okay. Regardless, the point is, is I had I run my bike without checking that, um, I could have destroyed something. Okay, so whether you get the, your your bike from a guy that's been running it, or or it's a barn find, or whatever, pull this off and take a look. Okay. The next thing is uh, is our pump. Okay, and we just connect the tank to the pump via. A hose okay oil inlet the pump is driven by the crankshaft indirectly through gear reduction okay so we spin this little pump at about two and a half times slower than the crankshaft okay now this is a three hole pump one two three three discharge holes is what we're referring to these are your two mounting holes Okay, this is the throttle plate, and inside there is what I call the throttle cam. Okay, and, and what happens is the crank's running, so this is spinning around. Okay, and this is hooked to our throttle. Okay, so at, at zero throttle, we're at zero position. As we open the throttle, we open the pump. Okay, and what that does is it causes the piston in here to reciprocate real not much at all at zero and then as we open this up it starts to reciprocate more and more and more until it reaches this maximum which is maximum throttle okay to deliver the maximum amount of oil then of course the, the last component is the oil lines okay so we got three oil lines you know one two three and they're connected to the case via a banjo bolt much like a, uh, a brake banjo bolt with not really it's got an orifice in the end of it but nonetheless same idea and what happens is we pump oil into that banjo fitting in the bottom of the banjo fitting there's an orifice and it drips oil down into the mains area the main bearing area also it pumps it up a little passageway through the cylinder in between the cylinder inlet or the carburetor if you wish and the piston so as this thing's running we're dribbling oil down into the mains and we're pumping it up this passageway and it kind of wells out okay and gets caught up in the uh, with the fuel and lubricates the top half and, and whatever goes through the bottom half first obviously so that's quickie overview on how the three hole system works the 3 old system, you'll find it on the 250s, 350s, 400s, and 500s. And some of the early 
750s, or I shouldn't say some, all of the early 750s, okay, had the three-hole system. So it'll be just like this. Now, in 74, 1974, for whatever reason, they, they changed it to a four-hole pump. Input's the same, throttle plates, same purpose, throttle cam, same purpose, reciprocating pump, all the same, four holes, four discharge, one, two, three, four, same mounting. Okay, and what they did is they used one port here, okay, and distributed oil to the main bearings only, okay. So we're taking one port, dividing it by three, dribbling into the main bearings. Then they took this smaller check valve, okay, same operation, there's a spring and a ball, and they mounted those into the carburetors one two three took up the other three holes okay so basically what they did is they took that drilled system that they had on all the other bikes through the cylinder itself and they just moved it outside okay um so there's your your basic differences in the three hole four hole pump um you know two the three hole pump is 250 350 um, 400, 500, three, oh, excuse me, three hole pump on the early 750s, later 750s, 74, 5, and 6 had this four hole, okay? So, we're going to talk a little bit about check valves, let's see, one style, two style, three style. These two are basically the same, okay? Uh, same width, same for um, same internals, okay. This one's a little different. This is the H2 for the carb, okay. And um, you can still get these new, all right. But and, and here you go, just to show you that. See, there's what three of them, four of them, whatever. Um, part number, blah blah blah. And you know what? The only problem with these is they still have the old springs in them, the 2.3 pound springs, okay. So you still have to take them apart and put the higher value that Kyle recommends, the higher value springs in there. I had to do that to uh, three of them on Hurley's, Hurley's uh, 750 water-cooled triple, okay, when we built him a set of lines. So, so anyway, you get this style. You get this one, which kind of the same line, if you notice. What they do with these is they, and these are the later bikes. And you'll find these on the 74s, 75, 76, okay, is what these are on. So what they did is they took this the brass and they bored up a hole for the spring. They dropped the spring in, they dropped the ball in. Then they took a brass plug and they pressed it into the end of this, okay. Then they took that assembly and pressed it up into the nylon. This is the barb fitting is what it is on the brass. Then they took this band and they shoved it down over the whole shooting match to capture it in there and keep it from leaking. This is what Steve and I call the non-serviceable valve. Steve and I call this the G3 style valve or the G3 valve. Now this little baby here, this is what you want. These are found on 73 and newer bikes, all of them. Okay, so if you have 73 and newer, you should have these on there. And the nice thing is, is uh, there you go. You can just take that hunker apart. Now these, I've taken a lot of these apart, and I, I believe what they did at the factory is um, they just took epoxy glue to seal these things because they won't seal in the, in the original form. And they smeared a two-part epoxy on there or whatever. I can't. It sure seems like that's what it is, and that's what I've used. And then you just screw them back in. Okay, and get them lined up with the case. You know, get them the proper alignment there and let it dry. Okay. Um, and I've done that. I've actually run a test on that, put it back together, let it set for a week or whatever, and it just comes right apart. And I even pressure tested it in up to like 50 pounds and it holds fine. Okay, so there shouldn't be any issues doing that. Now, the nice thing is, da -da -da, you can pull that baby apart like this and fix it. Now all the internals are missing, but there's that. 
That's an old spring. There's a check ball and a seal washer. Much like a crush washer on a brake line. Same idea. Okay, aluminum. Um, and you can replace the guts and hopefully get your smoking down a little bit. Um, and we do, I keep doing this, ah, we do have new springs. Okay, so we've got springs, you know, available that are at the 4.7 pound relief pressure or whatever Kyle recommends. So, so anyway, that's just a general overview of the system. Um, I'll probably get into check valves just a, maybe a little bit deeper on another video so we can see how I put them together anyway. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay, thanks guys.